Hey guys, what is up and welcome to a new League of Legends video. So recently I released a video talking about my top 5 assassins list, of course updating it from the previous one, and I think it's time to update my top 5 AP mid laners list as well. So this list is going to be for the current patch, but before I go into the number 5 spot, there's a few things I have to mention. First of all, there's a lot of champions that I really wanted to include in this list. For instance, I'll name a few. Morgana and Twisted Fate, but there's other champions I felt deserved a spot more. And I also want to say I did not put LeBlanc in this list because I did put her in the number 1 spot in my top 5 assassins list, and I see her as more of an assassin than an AP mage type champion. But if I were to include LeBlanc in this list, she would be number 1 for sure. So don't forget, this is going to be a list of my personal champions champions that I enjoy while also mixing in what I think is very good in the current meta. But without further ado, let's go to the number 5 spot. So to start things off, let's talk about Vladimir. This is a champion that has been seeing resurgence as of late. And the reason for that is quite simple. I mean, he just simply fits into the current meta because the current meta is very tanky so the games tend to last a bit longer than usual. And well, luckily for Vladimir, he fits right into that because the longer the game lasts, the more deadly he becomes thanks to his passive and overall just how his kit works. So not only is he tanky, but he also deals a ridiculous amount of damage late game. So with that being said, he's very annoying to deal with because by the time you finally get through all of his HP and his sustain, well he's just gonna pull under you and get a bit of that HP back, chances are he has a Zhonya's and overall I mean just not very easy to deal with. He brings in a very respectable amount of AoE damage and on top of that he has his ultimate not only dealing a lot of damage in itself, but also increasing the damage that his whole team can do to the champion. He's definitely one of the more difficult champions to gank, especially in the mid lane because the lane is so short and his pool is able to cover almost half of the distance if you have a bit of move speed. And he really is just the king of sustain with his Q giving him HP back and on top of that if you get the Hextech or the Will of the Ancients, well that's just even more HP you're getting back. The cons of Vladimir is the fact that he has a very weak early game and laning phase up until about level 7 or 8. For teamfights his kit heavily revolves around being able to have his E ability up at 4 stacks or at least 3 stacks as a teamfight happens, so with that being said you have to kind of get a better idea of how you want to sustain his E ability and always have it at the stacks that you want it to be. And lastly, he unfortunately does not offer any great CC. But let us move ahead into the number 4 spot where we'll talk about a champion I think is overall just a solid pick and something you cannot really go wrong with. Orianna has always been one of those champions where no matter who you pick it into or no matter what kind of team comp you pick Orianna into, you're just gonna do overall a good job if you know how to play the champion and she's not a bad pick almost ever. But luckily for her, I think she works even better in the current meta because a lot of tanky champions love to initiate, so for instance a Hecarim, a a Scion, a Zac, a Sejuani, a Rek'Sai, and Orianna can easily put her ball on them and as that tank champion goes right in the middle of the team fight, boom, she pops her ultimate and that's a 5 man ultimate. Her laning phase is quite strong because she has the shield, her auto attack does a lot of damage thanks to her passive and her Q ability is great at zoning out your opponent. She scales throughout the late game as well but she's also very strong mid game and even early game so she's just a very good champion throughout the whole game from start to finish. She brings a lot of utility to the team with the shield, with the move speed and I'm sure we all know that Orianna does have one of the best ultimates in the game that can easily turn around a teamfight. She offers a decent amount of CC with her slow ability from her W and her ultimate and overall just a champion I highly recommend you pick up that also just happens to be pretty good in the meta. The cons of Orianna is the fact that it can be a little difficult to track your ball in the midst of a huge teamfight, missing your ultimate can be disastrous and she's not really the easiest champion to pick up in my opinion. Just because you have to understand how to abuse your laning phase and to of course keep track of your ball. But let's get into the top 3 of this list and the first one we'll talk about is gonna be Cho'Gath. Much like Vladimir, Cho'Gath has also recently been seeing a lot of favor. And it really is for good reason because he's just a really strong champion overall. One of the main reasons why I think Cho'Gath is just so popular and strong is gonna be because of his W. I'm sure a lot of you are noticing that Riot has slowly been removing silence from a lot of champions like Talon and LeBlanc but here we have Cho'Gath not only having a silence ability but it's an AoE or cone type silence ability so many targets if not all five can be hit by it. This makes him unique and extremely strong at the moment. But on top of that he also has an AoE knockup ability, knockups of course if you're not aware being the best form of CC because tenacity does not reduce the knockup duration. His passive is amazing for the landing phase because unfortunately for him he is a melee champion so he can get poked down and harassed quite a bit but thanks to his passive that's suddenly not really that much of a problem. Another huge reason as to why I think Cho'Gath is just so darn strong in the current meta is most definitely his ultimate, dealing true damage, yes you heard it correctly, true 
damage to anyone he decides to use it on and if you're not aware true damage means that it goes through all of the armor and all of the magic resistance and exhausts and everything like that it does the exact damage it says no matter what they have so he's able to destroy even the tankiest of champions with his ultimate he himself is actually quite the tanky champion while dealing good damage and he has relatively low cooldown abilities assuming you have 40 percent the cons of Cho'Gath that i've noticed is the fact that he's a melee caster which obviously means that you know he can't really poke too often and he has to be right in the middle of the fight to get a lot of his damage off and his ultimate. And his main abilities that you'll be casting throughout a team fight, his Q and his W, are skill shot, making Cho'Gath sort of a do or die type champion because if you miss your abilities, that's going to be a little too long of when you're not going to be doing too much in the team fight and the enemy team is able to capitalize off of it. But overall, a very strong pick in the current meta. But let's move onwards to the number 2 spot where Zerath is going to be making an appearance. This is a champion that is my personal go-to champion. I mean, if I'm ever not really 100% sure who counters what or what I want to play or who I just feel comfortable playing at the very moment and I have to play an AP caster, Zerath is usually who I'll pick. I mean, he still definitely works in the meta and he's much like an Orianna. You can't really go wrong with him and no matter what kind of composition you pick him into or what the current meta is, he's gonna do quite well. Now, his laning phase isn't as good as an Orianna's, but I think he scales a lot better and overall is just a bigger threat. Now, the main reason for this is because he has very long range abilities. His Q, his W, and especially his ultimate can be shot from so far away that the tanks can hardly get to you before you're getting them to about half HP. He has relatively low cooldowns as well, so that means he can constantly dish out all of his damage over and over and over again. This definitely puts him in one of the best poke champions in the game. Because thanks to his passive giving him a lot of mana, especially if you auto attack a champion, he's able to dish out this damage quite frequently. But if you were to also get a loot in Zeko, I mean whenever you land that Q from max range or whatever the case may be, you're going to be dishing out so much damage, especially on the squishy champions, they'll have to back almost instantly. And I just love how his W and his Q ability can deal full damage to almost every single target that you hit as long as you hit it properly. Overall I just simply love Zerath and I have been loving this champion for a very long time. If you don't play him or if you have never played him or are thinking of picking him up, well I highly recommend doing it. The cons of Zerath is again he is purely skill shot oriented so that means if you miss your abilities well you're not going to be too effective. And he doesn't have any true damage or percentage type damage abilities so I mean even though he can go through a tank it's not the easiest champion to go through them especially when you compare it to someone like a Cho'Gath or the number one spot who just has so many abilities that she can spam. But speaking of the number one champion, here she is, Cassiopeia. Now again, I want to mention LeBlanc would have taken the number one spot, but I included her in my top five assassin list, which is why she's not in this list. But looking back at Cass, I mean, she is the definition of a hyper carry AP mage mid laner. The amount of damage that she can do late game and just how hard she scales into late game and honestly, even mid game is absolutely disgustingly absurd. Even though Cass also does not have true damage or percentage damage or anything like that, much like Zarathar or Yana. On the bright side, she has so many abilities that she can spam so often, especially her Twin Fang being her E ability. All you have to do is get the target poison and you're dishing out that E ability every half a second, just absolutely shredding through their HP. I mean, I truly believe that she has one of the highest potential to carry a games if you know how to play her. Then you have her passive scaling her into the late game absolutely beautifully, especially at 500 stacks, giving her 30% extra AP. And if you combine a Rabadons, I mean, wow, you're going to be sitting probably around a thousand if not higher. But then if you also decide to throw in the loot in Zeko, since she does benefit off of the move speed quite a bit, you'll be doing an even more disgusting amount of damage. I mean, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but that really truly is the name of the game with Cass, just doing a crazy amount of damage as fast as possible. But when I say as fast as possible, that doesn't necessarily mean in a bursty type fashion, because yeah, she can burst the champion down, but the great thing about her is that she also is known for her great sustained damage output. I mean, based off of what I just said, you don't want to have her fed, and you don't want the game lasting too, too long with a Cassiopeia in it unless of course she's on your team. Definitely a champion that is easy to carry with if you're extremely skilled with her and I just have to mention her ultimate being probably one of the best ultimates in the game if you can land it properly and just be patient and wait for the right moment, instantly changing a whole team fight around. And the ultimate sets up her QW to start spamming the E ability on the champion. The cons of Cassiopeia is that she's very unforgiving, she's extremely squishy and she has no built-in escapes so you have to position yourself correctly and play the laning phase very wisely. 
And her ultimate is her only form of CC, except for the slow that she provides with her W, but we're talking about hard CC here, like a stun or even a snare. So if you land your ultimate, boom, that's game changing. If you miss it, well, damn, that kind of sucks for you and your team. Cassiopeia is the champion I recommend picking up over any other champion at the moment, but keep in mind, she is a very difficult one at that, and she does take a bit of practice. But that is it for this top 5 AP mid laners for this current patch, guys, in the tank meta. Please tell me what you think about this list. What do you guys think are the top 5 mages at the moment? Also, if you did enjoy, please throw in a like, share it with your friends, and I'll be making more top 5 lists, with the next one potentially being the top 5 easiest champions for mid lane. But as usual, guys, I hope you did enjoy this video. Throw in a like if you did. Check out my other videos as well, and I'll see you for the next one. Peace.